A man is crossing the English Channel, but he's not alone. There's a price on his head. Rudolf Diesel, inventor of the diesel engine, tries to reach England, but he never arrives. Rudolf was the son of German parents and was born in Paris in 1858, a city reliant on horse-drawn transport that left the streets littered with manure. From a young age, he showed a keen interest in mechanics and engineering. At the age of 12, his family returned to Germany where he studied at the prestigious University of Munich. There, he specialized in thermodynamics. In 1893, with his new knowledge, he was hired by Mann, one of the world's largest steel manufacturers. Today, Mann builds engines and trucks. Taking advantage of the company's full infrastructure and resources, Rudolf saw this as his opportunity to develop a new type of engine one that would outperform steam as well as the recently introduced gasoline engines. These engines were very inefficient, as steam took a long time to boil water and get going. And gasoline, only 10% of what was burned was converted into useful energy, while the remaining 90% was lost as heat through the radiator and exhaust pipe. Furthermore, these engines required a spark to ignite the fuel, which had to be fired at exactly the right moment. Countries without oil had difficulty obtaining fuel. The diesel engine didn't require a spark to ignite the fuel. Instead, it compressed air inside a cylinder until it reached extremely high temperatures. At the last moment, fuel was injected, igniting spontaneously due to the heat. This process, known as compression ignition, was more efficient than the others. During its development, the engine demonstrated even greater efficiency when running on vegetable oil making it possible for any country with farmland to produce its own fuel, potentially reducing dependence on oil-producing nations. After patenting the engine, Rudolf founded Diesel Motor and Fabrik and began manufacturing it. Companies around the world licensed his patent and started producing diesel engines as well. In 1900, at the Paris World's Fair, he received the Grand Prix Award. Its 20-liter engine rotated at 172 RPM and produced 20 horsepower. It had an efficiency of 26%. By 1908, engines were installed in a wide range of vehicles, from giant ships to small cars. All of this brought him immense wealth and made him one of the most influential figures in the world. In this photo, we see him alongside Thomas Edison. But as is often the case, success came with its share of problems. There were other engines that operated in a similar way, such as the hot bulb engine, and the original patent that Diesel filed did not exactly match the engine that was ultimately built. Diesel initially had the idea and patented it, but when he attempted to build the engine, many aspects had to be modified to make it practical. For instance, he experimented with gasoline, but it detonated uncontrollably. He then tried injecting heavy oil, similar to modern diesel fuel, but it failed to ignite success finally came when he used vegetable oil. Another major challenge was figuring out how to inject fuel into a cylinder already filled with extremely hot, high-pressure air. Since many details of the engine were not covered by his patent, several manufacturers began producing it without paying him a cent. Others, in turn, sued him for demanding royalties. As he found himself entangled in legal battles across much of the world, most of his wealth ended up in the hands of lawyers. Surrounded by stress and financial despair, Diesel's health began to decline. He suffered from constant headaches that made it difficult for him to work. His line of diesel engines still needed refinement and faced legal claims from several users due to faulty engines. He started making poor decisions, which ultimately led Diesel's motor and fabric to bankruptcy. The oil industry was also concerned. Although the engine was now running on petroleum oil, since it was cheaper and didn't require waiting for crops to grow, Rudolf gave conferences claiming that peanut oil would be the fuel of the future. Therefore, there was a possibility that vegetable-based diesel engines would become popular, leading countries to start cultivating crops for fuel. This could have caused the entire oil empire to collapse. As a result, they began supporting competing engines and viewed Rudolf with suspicion. In a short time, the brilliant and successful engineer would be considered a man of empty words with a questionable patent and massive debts. On the night of September 29, 1913, Rudolf Diesel stepped aboard the SS Dresden, bound for England. The journey was supposed to be short, just one night across the channel, 
but he vanished without a trace. The next morning, the 55-year-old engineer had simply disappeared. No trace, no witnesses. His pajamas were neatly folded on the bed. The room was in perfect order, no signs of violence, and nothing was missing. Only one of his coats was found on the floor of an exterior corridor of the ship. The mystery was complete. Ten days later, another ship was sailing when suddenly a body drifted near. It was in a state of total decomposition but still had certain objects such as his wallet, his glasses case, and a pocket knife. The ship kept the belongings and returned the body to the sea as it was severely decomposed. His son later identified and confirmed that they belonged to his father. Immediately, without any investigation, the newspapers reported that Diesel had been murdered and thrown overboard. But who would want to kill him? On the eve of World War I, as Britain and France were about to enter into conflict with Germany, the list of those who wanted to eliminate the debt-ridden inventor was long. These are the theories that emerged. 1. Was he killed by German intelligence? The purpose of the trip was to meet with British businessmen and sell them the patent for his engine. Diesel fuel is more stable than gasoline and does not ignite as easily, making it ideal for use in war machines that are exposed to gunfire. Additionally, compared to steam, diesel fuel takes up 10 times less space than coal, making it perfect for use in submarines. If Rudolf Diesel were to arrive and settle in England, perfecting and manufacturing engines for the British, Germany could end up facing super machines that might cost it the war. German intelligence had been tracking his movements, and they too boarded the ferry. After the inventor had dinner, he stood up and headed toward his cabin. He knew he was being followed, but he trusted that the pocket knife he carried might help him. As he reaches the outer corridor, the night is stormy, and he sees some men in black jackets blocking his way at the end. He turns around, and the situation becomes even more complex. Two more armed men point their guns at him. He knows he won't make it out of there alive, so he quickly takes off his coat to swim better and jumps overboard, hoping to swim to shore. But the icy waters finish him off. In the corridor, only his coat remains, with no trace of blood. This version of the story fits with the limited evidence available, although the Germans claim the story is the other way around. Actually, the German version is the one that makes the most sense to me, too. Rudolf was contacted by a supposed British buyer who proposed a short trip to England to sell his patents to the government. The amount of money offered was so substantial that he couldn't afford to let the opportunity pass, especially given his financial troubles. He arranged a quick trip without his family, intending to go and return as fast as possible. In fact, his actions are consistent with someone who had no intention of fleeing because he's leaving his family in Germany. Otherwise, everyone would go on the boat. But as he leaves the dining room, Rudolph knows that the way to his cabin is short and puts his coat over his shoulders. He walks down the corridor as another man approaches on the opposite path. The British agent hits him and pushes him overboard. The coat falls to the floor and the agent disappears. However, we could put in this situation a hitman from the steam or oil industry or even someone to whom Rudolph owed money. But this is too weird and a conspiracy freak. As a third option, after abandoning his cabin and given the stormy night with waves, feeling seasick and suffering from a severe headache he often endured due to his accumulated stress, Rudolph accidentally loses his balance and falls overboard. Despite his efforts, he fails to reach the ship and later freezes to death in the waters of the channel. Then we move on to the fourth theory. Before boarding the ship, it is proven that Rudolph gathered all his money and gave it to his wife. He instructed her not to open the purse until he arrived in England. After leaving the dining room, overwhelmed by his financial debts and knowing there's no escape, Rudolph walks toward the sewage waters of the canal. He drops his coat and dives into the water to end his life. Although this also leaves a question. There was no suicide note or farewell letter, nor were there any signs of desperate behavior, and the meeting in England seemed promising. In any case, if he had intended to take his own life, he would have likely thrown himself into the sea on the way back home after failing the negotiations rather than before. The fifth possibility is that Rudolph is simply faking his death. Somehow, he bought the body of a dead random person without relatives from a hospital and managed to hide it in a large trunk on the ship. 
During the night, without anyone seeing, he threw the body into the sea along with its belongings and left his coat on the floor, suggesting that he may have fallen into the sea. He then pretends to be another passenger and arrives safely in England. With the money he had previously withdrawn from the bank and given to his wife, he quietly rebuilds his life while his debts disappear as he's presumed dead. However, no trace has ever appeared to suggest that the inventor is alive or hiding anywhere. Although there was a theory that he went to live in Canada, the reality is that since the body was returned to the sea, an autopsy could not be performed to verify if he had bullet wounds, if he was healthy, or even if he was really him. I have a second channel called True Events in 3D, where I recreate real stories and bring them to life through animation. If you enjoy spy stories, check out our video about how the CIA stole a Soviet submarine loaded with nuclear missiles, or the one about the man who survived two days naked inside a sunken ship 30 meters underwater, or the recent case of the former president of Chile who crashed his helicopter. What do you think was the real cause of his death? The German intelligence? The British intelligence? The steamer oil industry? Or maybe someone he owed money to? Did he fall overboard by accident? Did he try to take his own life? Or did he simply fake his death? Leave your opinion in the comments, share, and don't forget to give it a like.